In this video, we're going to be talking about Civil 3D's corridor design, uh, more specifically its targets, how targets work in Civil 3D's corridors, uh, and the power of those targets. Uh, those of you that know me uh, here at MicroCAD, I really try to pull into some of our training classes the use of targets a lot more than, than maybe others do. It only because I use targets and corridors for everything. I, I build parking lots out of corridors, we use detention ponds out of corridors. Um, corridors are a very extremely useful tool added to your tool chest within Civil 3D and understanding them is really the key to being able to design much more dynamic and stable designs within Civil 3D. So uh, if we take a look at this corridor, I'm going to target uh, I have an alignment down here and I have two offset alignments. One of those on the left hand side does have a transition lane so we'll talk about that. I also have a polyline here where we can target the polyline. Now when we talk about parking lot design, I know this is a roadway example. I, I recommend checking out some of uh, the documentation on parking lot design with Civil 3D uh, and I will probably make another video just kind of uh, showing you some tips and tricks in that area, but uh, for now we're just going to talk about simple roadway targets. Let's take a look at this offsets. Uh, I'm going to add in a brand new region before the intersection. Okay, uh, This region is going to use my MC full assembly and I'm going to start it just after that transition lane just to, to make things a little bit easier. And We're just going to say OK. I intentionally did not set any targets because I need to explain what they are first. Right now, the way an assembly works is that it is based off of a standard cross section. Those of you that are familiar with Civil 3D understand that, you know, if this is my assembly, right now this lane thinks that it is 14 fit, feet in width. However, you will notice that in my intersection, my curb lines follow that alignment nice but that new region that I just created does not. That is because this road is 12 feet wide. But at the transition all the way down here it obviously gets wider than 12 feet. Uh, it actually goes to 24. So now we gotta figure out okay um, would I need to make a new assembly or would I not? And There's a zillion different ways to go about this but for now we're just gonna make one assembly followed all different widths of pavement. So we do that by clicking on my region and I'm going to go to that region we just created and we're going to go to its targets. First the surface targets those are for our daylights. We're going to target existing grade. Our width targets we will target for the right side. Okay notice that we can target alignments, feature lines, survey figures, and polylines. Go to alignments and I'm going to select alignments from my drawing using this button here and the right side is that alignment. Now anyone used to the text editor knows that you have to click this button for anything to happen here otherwise if I say okay nothing happened okay this is very similar to the text editor that blue blue arrow in there so we'll hit add there it is it's added as a target we'll say okay do the same thing with the left hand side hit add, OK, and voila, there we go. Our targets have been added. It follows the lanes. Our daylights are targeting existing grade. Everybody's happy. Uh, now, the intersection, or I'm sorry, the transition lane, can be done a million different ways. If I could just continue this, this corridor on through that transition, you see how that works that follows very nicely however I'm not going to do that because if I increase the frequencies there meaning the amount of times that I sample my finished grade and my alignment it will sample it will increase the frequencies for the whole region that whole road so really not efficient is when we start talking about um, really asset management and civil 3D so we're gonna go in insert before region a region before I'm sorry same cross-section or assembly we'll call this transition 
and we're gonna just end it about here for now but the targets we need to go to targets same thing we'll go with daylight uh, our DTM or existing grade and the right hand side will follow this alignment okay and the left hand side will follow this alignment and there we go now if I wanted to you know you see that it follows that transition lane very nicely inserting or uh, changing the frequencies is simple there if I increase it to five maybe you'll see that that entire transition area increases its frequencies to five however the rest of the road does not you can imagine every one of those frequencies adds more data to your drawing so managing that and not doing it for the entire section makes sense in the long run okay this polyline that polyline is also going to be a target okay you don't have to use alignments so you can use simple polylines this is just a polyline if I were to choose it you will see that it is at elevation zero and when I go into edit my regions okay I'm going to edit and notice uh, just as a quick um, you know explanation here in 2010 Civil 3D when I highlight a region it highlights on my screen note the blue line here when I deselect it it goes away when it's selected it's there okay so I know what region I'm working with and if I want to split it at about this location and then again at about this location now I've created a new region okay and can take a look at those regions there we go alright so say okay just for now uh, and let's go in here and we will edit okay this region we're gonna call this pull off that's just to keep it simple we don't have to change the region uh, assembly or any of that uh, we just want to change the targets and you'll notice that I already have targets set up for this so this brings up a second point we can add in more than one target so on the right hand side of my road I want to target not an alignment this time but a polyline and I'm going to select that polyline from the drawing notice that both are listed here now that both are listed how does it know which target to hit okay well it says down here select choice if multiple targets are found target nearest or farthest I go with farthest to say okay 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 and there we go now I have sufficiently worked through my targets for a transition along with a pull-off you see how simple these targets are obviously there's a lot more to it but if you're ever interested I recommend checking in with us at microcad3d.com or contacting me at ghatch at microcad3d.com have a great day